Hi, I'm Oliver Camerdo, Principal of the International Macrobiotic School. I want to talk to you today about the relationship between food and emotional and mental illness. Um, you could define emotional, um, emotional illness as um, um, an exaggeration of emotions which we naturally all feel. Um, so we, we naturally all feel sometimes uh, some anxiety, some worries, some depression, some anger. Um, but when these become exaggerated, then we talk about people having um, uh, emotional problems or, or emotional illness. Uh, mental illness is more where people's uh, thinking or way of perceiving the world changes, um, uh, such as with schizophrenia or paranoia, where pe uh, people think that everybody is against them or, or is wanting to undermine them. Um, Part of my motivation for making this video is that there seems to be uh, uh, quite an uh, increase in emotional and mental health problems in children and young adults, uh, which is concerning a lot of people. And um, undoubtedly, there's a lot of, re lot of different reasons uh, for this increase. Um, uh, certainly, the emotional experience of uh, the emotional, uh, emotional upbringing of every individual has a big effect. If we if we go through uh, challenging uh, difficulties uh, of uh, bullying or abuse, or sexual abuse or uh, lack of attention, and neglect, that is going to create emotional, uh, mental problems. Um, a lot of people are also talking about social factors, uh, including the use of uh, greatly increased use of social media, um, um, creating. Uh, pressures to look and behave uh, in certain ways, uh, which I think is definitely a factor. Um, another factor I think it is very much food and as uh, in the UK and many other countries we've experimented with eating a high proportion of processed foods and a lot of stimulants uh, as part of the daily diet it's really having a big impact on um, on people's on how people feel and how people think and uh, people's in, in emotional uh, and mental well-being. Um, so this is the aspect that I want to talk a bit about today because I think uh, I think this really needs to be looked at and kind of understood more. Understood more. There's a strong movement towards um, changing food uh, it, it, for greater physical health. Um, but I think it can really make a big difference uh, to people's emotional and mental health as well. Uh, I've certainly seen this with quite a number of uh, students and uh, clients that I've had over the years. So how do we understand um, the connection between food and our emotional health? So um, I've been studying oriental medicine for the last 40 years, uh, Chinese medicine, macrobiotics, shiatsu, etc. And um, this oriental approach takes a holistic view of, uh, uh, of ourselves and life, that we have a physical body, we have emotions, we have thoughts, we have a spirit, and that all of these are very connected. So if something is happening to our body, uh, that's going to affect, uh, have some effect on our feelings, emotions, the kind of thoughts we have uh, on our spirit, um, whatever thoughts we're having, will affect our emotions and will affect our body. Um, if we're having strong emotions because of what's happening in our life around us, um, that will have an impact on the body and the other levels. So these levels all affect each other. And our food, uh, um, as has long been recognized in many traditional medicines, um, and is now becoming much more strongly recognized in, in modern Western medicine, food has an enormous impact on our physical health. Um, and if it's having an impact on our physical health, then it's definitely having an effect on our emotional and mental health as well. So um, in this video, I don't want to go on too long. I want, I want to be fairly concise. Um, um, and I, I, I want to look at this connection in two different ways. First of all, a very simple kind of yin yang, in, out, up, down, uh, kind of way, uh, which is very simple, but also revealing. And then also going a little bit into the role of different organs, um, which in oriental medicine not only have physical functions, but also emotional and mental and spiritual functions as well.
So first of all, the simple way, always good to look at things in a simple way to start off with. So um, in, uh, in Oriental thinking, um, uh, there are certain foods that take our energy down in the body. Uh, these foods are more kind of solid, more warming, more energizing, and they take our energy down in the body so that we then have more energy in our bellies. And if you're into kind of a little bit more esoteric, into the lower two or three chakras. Um, and this gives us more energy in the lower body. And this helps us feel connected with our physical body. And through that, with the physical world and with physical reality. Um, if we don't have a good amount of energy in our lower body, then our energy is more up here and we can feel much more detached and separated and easily can become more deluded. Um, um, so certain foods will bring our energy down um, and um, connect us with our bodies, uh, with the material world. Um, also, when we have a good amount of energy in our lower body, then we tend to have a stronger sense of self, which is which is a very healthy thing to have a, have a good, strong sense of self. And that tends to give us more feeling of self-confidence, whether we're with other people or just in the world in general, um, and less nervousness and anxiety. I, I haven't met anybody yet who never feels nervous or anxious um, uh, when they're really honest. It seems a very human thing. Um, but if we are well rooted in our bodies and we have a good amount of energy, that tends to give us more um, self-confidence, more self-assuredness. Um, then there are other foods which very much take our energy up in the body. Um, so this can weaken the lower body, can weaken that sense of uh, self and of being grounded or uh, um, connected with the physical body and the physical world and can really make the head overactive so that uh, we overthink. Um, and I think a lot of emotional mental problems come from overthinking in a detached way from reality. Um, so if we're eating a lot of these foods, it brings a lot of energy and activity into our heads. So to give an example, one may have bumped into someone and said something and then maybe they were upset by what we said. Um, and then we've gone away and we're thinking, oh no, I upset them. And then what was it I said? And, you know, I said something wrong. And, and then we start thinking, oh yeah, you know, I've upset them before. There must be something really wrong with me. And yeah, I can think of this happening with other people and there must be something really, really wrong with me. So I think I just, I, I don't want to see anybody again. I, you know, I just, you know, there's, there's obviously there's something really bad about me. And those, those thoughts, the more we repeat them, the more they magnify and become stronger until they can completely take us over um, through overthinking um, in a way that's detached from reality. Um, also, you know, we need some energy coming up. Uh, to give us some feeling of joy in our hearts and to help our emotional expression and to help our, our, our thinking and creativity. Um, but too much can also create, uh, really exaggerate uh, feelings like anxiety and uh, panic attacks uh, or feeling of panic and creating panic attacks. Um, um, and um, yeah, various other emotions. Um, so um, we want to get a, we want to get a balance uh, in our food. So let's talk about which foods take our energy down and which foods take our energy up. So in general, um, I would advocate eating a plant-based diet as being best for our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health. Plant foods that take our energy down and create more warmth and energy and drive and stamina and self-confidence and a connection with our body are the more solid whole foods, whole grains, uh, brown rice, especially short grain brown rice, millet, buckwheat, quinoa, wholemeal breads, sourdough breads, etc. Also root vegetables, 
long cooked beans and pulses, and also long cooked dishes in general, because when we cook things a longer time, um, it makes them a little heavier and then it, they tend to take our energy downwards in the body. So these plant foods are going to help build energy in this lower part of the body. Also animal foods do. Animal foods are very kind of concentrated. Uh, animals have more concentrated energy and often nutrients than plant foods. So eating uh, fish, shellfish, uh, birds, mammals, um, heavier dairy foods like cheese, uh, eggs, uh, also will create this. Um, this will tend to create more energy uh, downwards in the body. I'm not advocating eating a lot of those. Eating too many definitely causes uh, physical health problems. It could, emotionally, it can also create a lot of deep tension and stagnation, which can also make us feel depressed, blocked, frustrated, unhappy. Um, but certainly eating a good amount, especially eating a good amount of the more dense plant foods will help create energy, confidence, etc. Um, then foods which bring our energy up. Uh, foods which do this mildly are foods like you know, green vegetables, uh, moderate use of fruit, um, herbal teas, um, um, you know, things like this, things which have lightness, also more lightly cooked, or raw foods have a lightness about them, they take our energy more up, they tend to be more relaxing. Um, then there are the foods which more strongly take our energy up. Stimulants, um, uh, caffeinated drinks, so coffee and black tea. Uh, sugary foods, uh, which are a lot, uh, are bringing our energy up. Uh, we tend to think of these foods, these stimulants and sugar, as giving us energy. That's what we experience, but actually what they're doing is they're bringing energy from deep in the body and the lower body up and outwards, so we experience the energy, but afterwards we can experience a low, which emotionally could be experienced as depression. Um, also, alcohol does the same thing, and in, in Western medicine, alcohol is is um, described as a depressant. Um, a little bit can, can bring our energy up, create some joy and expressiveness, but if we drink, uh, if we drink more, then it depletes our energy and then it, become, it has a depressing effect. Um, so if we're, um, if we're e uh, eating, drinking, a lot of these um, more in macrobiotics, we term more yin, foods to bring our energy upwards and outwards, um, stimulating the brain. A lot of people use coffee to stimulate the brain, but if we use them too much, they can weaken the lower body. We, we lose our groundedness, our connection with reality, and uh, we can start overthinking and things, uh, emotions like anxiety can become um, uh, exaggerated. And also if the body really becomes very depleted, very empty, um, of energy, um, then people can feel uh, very easily overwhelmed, um, uh, very anxious about being in different you know, situations because of not having the energy to deal with any kind of challenges outside. Um, and that feeling of overwhelm is, you know, we've probably all had at times, is a very unpleasant feeling when we just, we can't cope with the world. Um, and along with that kind of insecurity and um, feeling that we don't have a place anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, the way we feel that we have a place in the world is first of all having a place in our body and then feeling how our body has a place in the world. Um, so a couple of nights ago I was doing my free um, Tuesday night um, question and answer session. Um, uh, on Facebook Live, which I'm doing during the coronavirus lockdown, every Tuesday night on Facebook, 8.20 UK time. And I was talking about this, and several people described how uh, giving up, for example, uh, um, coffee really reduced the amount of anxiety that they were feeling. Um, uh, and uh, helped them to feel calmer, more grounded, you know, more themselves, more connected to reality. So this is, you know, anyone who's suffering from anxiety and depression um, really should just stop all caffeine, 
should really stop sugar and should stop alcohol. Quite a lot of people have done that already because they've found how detrimental it is, but many people haven't and um, really should uh, uh, consider doing that. So this is, a, this is a very simple way of considering looking at how food affects uh, um, our bodies. Should mention recreational drugs as well, which can, can, trait, can create a, a rush, a high. Uh, again, where is that energy coming from? Actually, it's not free energy. It's not coming from the drug so much. The drug is just moving our internal energy upwards and outwards. So, as many you know, people as many people have found that you know, overuse of whether it's marijuana or stronger drugs can lead to not only addiction but also to uh, severe depression and uh, a lot of emotional and mental uh, health issues because they 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 knock the stuffing out of us. They knock the the key, the chi, the energy out of us, and then then how do we deal with life when we have no energy inside of us? Um, no energy in our bodies, no energy in our brains uh, to think, to deal with things, to work things out, to make decisions. Um, and I think you know, definitely um, overuse of recreational drugs is having a big impact on emotional and mental health. Then, so second understanding we could go into, which I'm just going to mention because it's a very big subject, we go into this a lot in our longer courses, um, um, the six, six Steps to Wellbeing online course, and then when, um, when the lockdown is finished, our first, second year, etc. training courses. Um, the connection between food and specific organs in the body. Um, in Oriental medicine, they consider every organ has not only physical functions, but also emotional, mental, and spiritual functions. So they regard, for example, our kidneys, as not only uh, producing urine, uh, but also including the function of the adrenal glands on top of the kidneys, which are very linked with our energy. They produce adrenaline and other hormones. Um, and one of the most important functions of, of the kidneys in oriental medicine is, is our fundamental store of energy in the body. If you've seen the the adverts on telly with the, for the Duracell batteries, uh, little pink bunny rabbits, sweet little pink bunny rabbits with, with two Duracells in the back, in their back, just where the kidneys are. The stronger the kidneys, the, the, f the further you can run, the, 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 the higher the mountain you can climb, the more energy you have, the more life energy you have, the more you can do in life. And if you have the inferior batteries, then you flunk out uh, uh, much sooner. So that's a pretty good analogy for the kidney energy. So the foods I described as bringing the energy down nourish the kidneys. Um, whole plant foods, long cooked foods, um, uh, broth soups, uh, mineral rich foods, also sea vegetables using moderate amounts of salt, uh, small amounts of animal food, fish, fish soups, etc. all nourish the, the kidneys. And that gives us a feeling of having physical energy and feeling motivated, having stamina wanting to take on new challenges, don't mind taking a bit of risk, um, uh, feeling, feeling courage, get up and go. Um, but if the kidney energy becomes weak, then we start suffering from the opposite. We, we feel deep in the cold and no energy. And we just want to curl up under a duvet and we don't want to go out. We can't stand any challenges. We feel easily overwhelmed. Uh, we feel anxious deep in our body. Um, with anxiety, it's good to, if you if you or other people feel anxious, see if you can feel what part of the body. Some people feel very anxious here. It's more connected with the heart. Other people in the in the solar plexus feeling butterflies in the stomach. So it's more connected with those organs. Other people, it's more lower in the body or in the whole body. And then it's more connected with the lower chakras and, and with the kidneys. Um, so if the kidney injury becomes weak, then we can just feel an overall fear of uh, fear of life and fear of engaging with life um, and that can start influencing our thoughts we feel everybody's out to get us we feel paranoid um, and everything is out to uh, um, to destroy us or, or, or beat us down or whatever um, and then 
and then fear and you know anxiety come to dominate our life um, so these things I've experienced a lot with clients and students my own personal experience with this was um, you are descri described very quickly very the, the highest mountain in the in the in South Wales um, in the Brecon Beacons Pe Penny Van it has a kind of has a, a slow slope up one side and a very steep slope on the other side so everybody walks up this slope you can't walk up this slope because it's too steep when I was in my early 20s walked up there with a good friend stood on the edge looked down no fear of heights whatsoever um, when I was in my early 30s, I, really, I quite severely burnt myself out from um, overwork, a lot of emotions going on, um, didn't have many emotional skills at that time. And I really burnt myself out, which in oriental terms is really reducing my kidney energy. Went up there again with a friend, came up this side, I got within about 40 yards of the edge, and the fear was just was so great. Like there was no way I could go near the edge. I went down on my hands and knees. I tried crawling to the edge. I got a bit closer, and I still could not get to the edge. Um, it, the, the fear was just too great. Then that was a wake-up call for me. I then spent a few years eating, living in ways to really increase my kidney energy. And uh, a few years later, I went up with my son. Um, nice and sunny at the bottom. We got up the top. There was a really strong wind blowing in this direction. We hung on to each other and walked along this ridge, um, uh, which was in the wind trying to blow us over. It started snowing as well. I felt fine, um, no great fear at all. Um, so for me, this was this was a really clear indication that fear can come not only because of the emotional experiences we've had in our life, they can also come because of a weakness or an imbalance in our physical bodies. Um, so our physical bodies are, are our home during this lifetime and they 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 create a kind of there are ground uh, there are there are emotional uh, base and grounding and if we can have a strong body and a healthy balanced body it really helps us um, uh, emotionally and mentally to be grounded and balanced and uh, have a balanced view and opinions on things as well uh, to be able to have opinions and make decisions, but also to be able to listen to other people. Um, so to choose, uh, to choose uh, maybe another example. So that's a little bit about the kidneys. Um, to choose the the liver. Um, so the liver um, physically is taking all the food that uh, uh, from our intestines all the proteins and the carbohydrates, the fats, minerals, vitamins, etc. And it processes them, changes them into different things. Um, if we've eaten a lot of fats, it'll create fats which will be, get stored in the body. Some of the vitamins are stored in the liver. Um, it'll, it helps control the blood sugar levels, etc. Um, in oriental medicine, the liver is also distributing uh, chi, qi, uh, energy around the body. So it helps us physically move, it helps our emotional expression, it helps our mental creativity and expression. Um, 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 it helps us, um, uh, it helps movement in these different areas. Um, if, if for some reason this movement isn't happening, um, uh, then the, and the liver energy becomes blocked, then that can have certain physical effects. Uh, uh, it can create a lot of tension in the body, which may lead to tension headaches and, and other symptoms, um, a lot of menstrual cramps and pain. Um, emotionally, it can also make us feel very uptight, frustrated, angry, have a short fuse. Um, smallest thing, bang, we're off. All our anger comes up in, and to other people observing, it's obviously inappropriate to uh, what was happening. Um, so what can, what can block the liver energy? So certainly a very big factor for a lot of people is emotional suppression. Um, uh, I think a lot of us have learned through our childhood and maybe adulthood to suppress our emotions. 
It wasn't safe to express our emotions. It wasn't safe to cry. There was nobody around to 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 listen to us and how we're feeling. Um, if you're with small children, you know, what do they want to do? Every couple of minutes, they want to run up. They're a little bit upset. They need a little hug, a little cuddle, some reassurance, and then they go off again and they come back and oh, they want to tell you about this and you listen and then okay, yeah, that's good, okay, and then they go off again into the world, happy again, and they come back and. Um, that's what we need a lot of in order to, you know, for our emotional mental health. Um, a lot of us didn't get as much of that as we would have liked. Uh, I think our emotional upbringing is never perfect. Um, but if we didn't, you know, often we were not anybody did we not get that, but we were maybe um, um, really taught to suppress our emotions. Don't be so silly. Grow up. Don't make a fuss. Don't get angry. Um, um, yeah, and maybe we were punished uh, for expressing our emotions. Um, um, maybe we were bullied when we expressed our emotions. So we learned to emotionally, emotionally suppress. That will create a lot of tension in the liver. But talking about food, also too many of those more yang foods which take our energy down, too, especially the really yang ones, the, the really heavy, dense ones, too much meat, eggs, salt, cheese, um, uh, maybe chicken can create a lot of heat and tension in the liver and then small thing happens and bang all that energy comes out of the liver big explosion uh, maybe a lot of aggression violence swearing f words c words you know, uh, that's what happens when, our, when, when we're holding a lot of tension in our liver a lot of banging pointing uh, this excess energy coming out of the liver um, so if people are having uh, anger problems, okay, maybe, you know, almost undoubtedly a lot of that goes back to their emotional experiences. Um, and, uh, but food can definitely aggravate that uh, a great deal. Um, just a couple of other kind of quick examples. We could go on to the, to the lungs, which are uh, not only exchanging gases, but also uh, very much involved in our uh, exchange with other people, with our socialization, with our relationships. If, if, they, if, if the health of our lungs goes down, then we can start having a lot of difficulty with relating to other people, a lot of underconfidence, uh, and then avoiding social situations, not knowing how to speak to other people, feeling awkward in social situations, becoming much more lonely, uh, much more of a loner in one's life. Um, the heart, um, this is where we feel loving connections with other people. If that's, if that's been um, you know, certain experiences and certain foods can really diminish um, you know, the heart energy and then we can feel a lack of love, for, you know, connection to others, uh, to ourselves, lack of uh, appreciating ourselves, um, feeling we're insignificant, uh, etc. Um, um, so intestine, stomach, all of them have different uh, emotional relationships. So all are helped, you know, in general, we could say all are helped by eating a balanced plant-based diet, whole food diet, eating a good amount of whole grains, uh, vegetables, beans, pulses, uh, a, a, a bit of uh, fruit, seeds, nuts, sea vegetables, maybe a little animal food, especially fish, shellfish have a less strong effect on the body, um, some herbs, oil, you know, uh, and other kind of you know, things in small, small amounts. This will not only help bring the body into balance, it will also um, help somewhat with emotional and, uh, and mental uh, problems as well. Some people dramatically, some people maybe not so much, but some people really quite dramatically. And really, if any of you um, yourselves are suffering from uh, emotional and mental difficulties uh, or you know other people or you work with people that do really please do consider um, that uh, a change in food may really help create more stability that's what i was looking for earlier create more emotional stability um, um, within yourself and calmness um, um, if you want to learn more about these things uh, we run a whole wide range of courses uh, here at the International Macrobiotic School. 
Um, a lot of self-help courses, also longer training courses. Uh, at the moment, obviously, we're not running courses in person, uh, but there's a range of online courses which you can check out on our website. Um, um, cooking courses, more oriental medicine courses, uh, six steps to well-being course goes into more depth. Um, if you have really got a strong taste for this, then we run a, a one-year course, the next one starting next spring. Um, we're a 30-day part-time course which really goes into a lot of depth uh, with food and health and oriental medicine and exercise and uh, really looking at the kind of food emotional connections. So uh, do check uh, do check out the website. Also, if you if you've got questions, then every Tuesday night uh, I'm on Facebook Live. Go to the International Macrobiotic School Facebook page, 8:20 Tuesday evenings. And uh, you'll see me on there and you just click on and you can type in questions. So I really hope that's been helpful. Um, 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 maybe some of that's familiar to some of you and maybe to some of you that's you know, kind of new information. I really think this information needs to be out there much more. And if you have questions, uh, do get in touch. And uh, if you really want to pursue this more, please do uh, come and join me on uh, uh, one or other course. Okay, thank you very much for listening.